Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Babylon 5. This is season number three. This is episode number eight. This episode is called Messages from Earth. So I'm just thinking to myself, like who on earth would be sending messages to Babylon 5? Unless it's like messages via other people from say maybe Nightwatch or something like that and they've been sent to Babylon 5 possibly or it could be something to do with Psychor and maybe they've sent messages via somebody to the station. I just don't know, but I don't think it's going to be very good, whatever the outcome is, because things like this never seem to end well when, you know, messages from Earth makes me just think Clark administration is involved in some shape or form. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this one is actually about, because this title, it can literally be anybody who is sending these messages, or it might be a distress signal. You just don't know. Like, that's the beauty of it. Like, it literally Literally could be anything and I think that's why I'm like really excited to watch this one so I'm just gonna get straight on into this let's go where in my contract does it say that I have to eat the same food for breakfast every day for three years paragraph 47 subsection 19 clause 9a it's, that post is insane plan. by the way behind them what 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 it's nothing. What is it? I smell bacon and eggs. <laughs> Get out of here. Do you know how much it costs to bring eggs all the way out of here before they spoil? I have tried for years. It can't... <laughs> bacon and eggs? Definitely. <gasps> oh. It's from Marcus. It's nothing like that. I did him a favor. I helped get him an identity card so they could use some of the facilities on the station. Look, if you want it, it's yours. Oh, no, I wouldn't mm. dream of it. <laughs> I Come totally on. ate it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, don't mind us. We'll just sit right here. Yeah. And watch. I'm gonna kill him. After breakfast. If I can find him. Oh, Lucy Callie's good, isn't he? Get out of here! Go! I guess she's important? Oh, that hair. As Senate hearings into the death of President Luis Santiago enter their sixth week, evidence purporting to be from President Clark's personal physician has surfaced. <gasps> These records seem to indicate that the illness which prevented President Clark from being aboard Earth Force One when it exploded... Jacobs! Jacobs! ...been a convenient alibi. Representatives for President Clark, speaking before the Senate Investigative Committee today, dismissed these latest allegations, describing them as attempts to destabilize Earth oh. within and without. I've got goosebumps. In related news, Earth Dome Chief of Staff Bill Harris announced that a new alien race only recently detected may pose a significant threat to planetary security. When asked what was being done to counter this threat, Harris said only that extreme measures may be required. Two weeks down, six to go before I've repaid my debt to society for attacking Mulari. I've taken the opportunity provided by my incarceration to meditate. Oh. To think. <laughs> Sometimes I even sing. I know. We got a petition. <laughs> for or against? Based on the sound, they think we're torturing you in here. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Garibaldi. Oh, man, he is you adorable. Know, a true artist is never appreciated in his own time. Or his own cell block. <laughs> and you, are you enjoying the book of Chiquan? Well, what I can follow, yeah. I just wish there were a translated version I could read. <gasps> Sacrilege. It must be read in the mother tongue or not at all. I like that. Yeah. Chief, we need you ASAP. Code 7R. Her name is Dr. Mary Kirkish. Through the ranges, I heard she was on the run, so I asked Marcus to find her. She risked her life coming here. What does Mary a lot of know? Want her dead. But once she gets here, once you talk to her, you'll understand why. Oh God! What does this lady know? <gasps> we haven't seen him for ages. For the past 12 years, I've been working for interplanetary expeditions. Shit! We conduct archaeological digs on other worlds in search of new technology. Yes, we know. Well, new to us anyway. You've seen the ads. Seven years ago, I was stationed on Mars. 
We were always getting false leads on artifacts supposedly buried beneath the Martian soil for thousands of years. Nothing ever came of it. And then one day our sonic probes picked up something 300 feet beneath the surface of Syria Planum. We didn't know what it was. Except it wasn't a natural formation. Oh no. And given its depth, it had to have been there at least a thousand years. Oh shit in hell. It was the middle of the Martian winter, so it took weeks just to dig half of it out of the ground. But that much was enough to give me nightmares for the rest of my life. It's the same ship we've been seeing on the news lately. Oh, balls. The one that looks like it came straight from hell. Why is it on Mars? But back home, they're saying they've never seen ships like this before. Oh, Delenn is spooked, man. I was there. This is true. They haven't been trying to find out what these ships are. They're trying to find out who else knows about them. Oh, Mr. and Dowie! That's a big conclusion based on finding just one ship. But there was just one ship, wasn't there? Oh, no. That was just the start. We told Earth Central what we'd found. It was a strike of a lifetime. We were all very excited. But there was something about it that made us nervous. <gasps> and then one of our workers who was clearing away the dirt accidentally touched it with his bare hand. He died instantly, as if the life had just been sucked right out of him. Oh, no. Did you ever get a reply from Earth Central? No, not at first. But a week later, we were suddenly ordered to stop digging and pull back to our secondary base two miles away. Oh, we didn't want to go. But we were told anyone who didn't move would be fired, so we moved. For six days, we just sat there waiting Did what the while unmarked shuttles moved in and out of the area surrounding the dig. Unmarked shuttles. And then suddenly everything stopped. No shuttles, no communication, nothing. That's when I saw it. Oh, yeah. Jump in a hole and pull the ground in over me, but there was nowhere to go. Oh. At first, I thought it was destroying the other ship. Then I realized it was digging it out. Oh, no, it's a rescue mission. For 20, 25 minutes, nothing happened. Then we heard it. Is right into your brain and rips it apart. Yeah, it's horrible. It woke it up. The sound of something terrible being born. They warned us that if we told anyone what we'd seen, there would be unfortunate consequences. Oh, balls. Then they broke us up, assigned us to other worlds, so we'd never have a chance to talk to each other. What's your involvement in all this? I was piloting a shuttle on Mars around the same time. We went down. Two of us had to get back to civilization on our own. I saw part of what she just described. When I went back to check it out, it was all gone. Oh my god. Oh, for this. Oh god, they have so a place at um Syria Plain, don't they? A few weeks ago, I was called into a new dig. They found another one of these things. Why? This time on Ganymede. But there's a difference. Whoever's behind this back home doesn't want to give it back. In three days, they're going to take it back to Earth. Study its secrets and learn how to use it against the other races and, if necessary, against our own people. That's why I had to warn someone. You can't let them get a hold of one of these ships. Oh, no. They don't want it so we can fight these things. They want us to become more like them. We've made arrangements to get you into Minbari space. Oh, yes! Here, please take care of Dr. Kirkish. This is too big. <sighs> how can we fight something like that? I need to think about this for a while. Oh. Alone. Come up with a plan. I'll call you when I have something to say. Oh, man. Dylan, stay. I'm gonna need you for this. All these propaganda posters, Sorry? man. Where's the chief? He's been in some meeting with the captain all afternoon. Something you want me to tell him? No, no, no. no. It's just checking. There's a night watch meeting tomorrow morning, Zach. I just want to make sure you knew about it. Another one? Wait. I think Zach just really wanted that extra money, didn't he? <laughs> Big things are coming. You've got to be ready for them. Oh, Zach. I hate that Zach's involved in this. I love Zach. Oh, oh, it's like Talia. It's 
done. If St. Lanier ahead, he'll make all the arrangements. What are we doing? Are you sure you wish to go through with this? What are we doing? Uh. We've got to stop that ship before it leaves Ganymede. It's well. I love it. Oh, no. How? Delenn and I will take the White Star into Earth-controlled space. With luck, we'll find the ship, destroy it on the ground before they can activate it. Balls. If not... Captain, you can't do this. As soon as you open up a jump point near Jupiter, you'll be picked up by the early warning system. I know. Our own ships will be sent in to destroy you. You'll be completely outgunned. Neither of us has any illusions about what we are planning to do. You can't take on Earth. I mean, not now. Later. Later is too late. <laughs> We've already notified the White Star. It's a standby. Oh, Delenn is down for this. <laughs> so what are you going to do when they open fire? You're going to fire back? On one of our own ships? What if you're captured? We won't be captured. One way or another. The decision's mine and mine alone. And it's made. <laughs>